Miss Cheryl Boyce Taylor. I'm wondering what, if anything, you held in your hands after Malik died, what you might still hold in your hands today. I know it is different to lose a person who was distinctly yours, but also everyone's. What is that feeling? Is it better or worse to have a loss be something you are mourning in a singular way, which is not the way everyone else is mourning, though perhaps they think it is? On the day I heard the news, I first sat down on my couch and then instinctively checked every corner of the internet I could, hoping it wasn't true. Death is such a reckless and unexpected visitor, waiting to make a mess of our past, present, and the future in equal measures. I am not here asking for a reliving of the moment, but I am here instead to say thank you for raising a writer. I was raised by a woman who wrote, and I don't know if that means anything other than the fact that I saw language as a way to get free at an early age. She wrote a book that she didn't live long enough to finish. And I have all the books you've written stacked outside of my bookcase, which has long since run out of room. I am saying that I love words and I have long appreciated what you do with them. And all of this time I was listening to Malik rap. I was hearing your fingerprints. You raised a literary figure, someone who knew his way around verse and punchline and clever turn of phrase. At the heart of his writing and yours was the same driving force, themes of the vast black interior, hair texture and skin color, inner and outer strife and all the small joys that must be unlocked to survive it all. I knew I would miss him when he was gone. I always did. But I thank you particularly for still living and writing, for the way you let the syllables dance around each other in the air when you read your poems, the way you let words hang above an audience and linger way up with the dimming lights in a room until they fade and fade and eventually fall away for good, a fresh memory.